So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. So we're going to just journey through the word of God together. And if you are saved, rejoice, like I said. If you are saved, rejoice and tell somebody else about Jesus, okay? Uh, starting with verse 1, Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the, the, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in which you once walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in this age to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace we have all been saved, those who are saved. For by grace we have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared or foreordained beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, you are called uncircumcisioned by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being alienated from aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant promise, having no hope and without God in the world. In other words, we were homeless. <sighs> Think about that for a moment. You and I were homeless. We were lost. But God, by his grace, sent his son, Jesus, to die for us in our place. And anyone who believes in that, believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried and rose again, that's the ticket to salvation, if you believe. Amen? It's all about reconciliation. God loves us so much. He don't want to leave. He doesn't want to lose not one of us. And let's talk about what it means to be made alive. See, Paul wrote this to believers who were made alive by God's work, not by our work, but by God's work. But if you look back and, and I love uh, Ephesians chapter one, and Paul has a powerful prayer there. I won't go through the whole thing, but it's in um, Ephesians chapter one and 17. It says now that your eyes are open, you have been like uh translated to another kingdom, okay? Once your eyes is open, you have been defected to another country. You know, like it used to, people used to be defected from one country to the other, and like Germany, they were defected to another country. Okay, we have been defected to a kingdom. We are now citizens of heaven with a new name, okay? A new citizenship, a new lingo, a new language, okay? Under a new management, given the power of God. 
you know, God has given us that power on uh, on his behalf. He's given us all power. All power is given to, to the church, which is the body. OK, it's, I'm not talking about an um, organ, uh, organized um, uh, group of people. I'm talking about being handed over to the hands of the father, the one who loves us. We have been translated into the kingdom of God far above all principalities and all power of darkness. I love it. You know, we were dead. That's what he's saying. We were dead in trespasses and sins. So we can't judge and condemn others, okay? What we're to do is pray for them. Show them the love of God. Bring them over, you know? Because like I said before, hell was not meant or prepared for people, for us. It was prepared for the devil and his bunch, that bunch, okay? But because of the rebellious of men, because of the hardness of their hearts and they're not wanting to, to listen to what God is saying and shut in the word, the truth, then, you know, they'll take a part in it. But it was not meant for human beings, okay? So let's talk about what we were. We were lost in trespasses and sins. You know, we all were before we got saved. So we're not better than anyone else. We happen to, to receive that. So we must give the gospel to others so they'll have that choice, that chance to receive. Okay, it says we were blind. Let Tonight, and I've said that several times before, let your pen be your best friend. Okay, let your pen be your best friends because I have some scriptures that I won't probably be able to get through all of them, but these is going these scriptures are going to help you. Okay, and let you know where you came from. Okay, don't think you're so high and mighty, mighty and all of that because you know Jesus paved the way. He made it possible for us, and all we have to do is receive that free gift. But we were once blind. In Corinthians four, I'm going to go there really quick. It tells us about that. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three and four. And it goes like this. It says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So it shows us right there. It's veiled. It's hidden to those who don't believe. Unless their eyes are open, they won't receive this good news of the gospel of Christ, which is a terrible thing. Thing because God wants the light to come on. He wants to turn on. He wants their light to turn on. He wants them to receive him. As God commanded the light to shine in the darkness in Genesis 1 and 3, so he turns on the light in people's heart so that they can see Jesus Christ. People who do not believe are blind by Satan. Okay? They're blind by Satan. So everyone needs to have the opportunity for their lights to come on. That's what God wants, our lights to come on, to us to understand this. To this be to be unveiled to us. Okay? Just like Paul said in 17, he said that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we may know the hope and the glory that God has for us. Mm, he has so much for his children. That's why the enemy's trying to keep you away from it. Remember back a long time ago when they, they said that it was giants, the spies went out. And they came back, their report was, it's giants in the land. It's giants, it's giants in the land. Of course there's giants in the land because the fruit was powerful, the fruit was good. And see, that's why there's giants and there's fallen angels here, you know? And it's like a mass of, of, of thoughts that's being spewed out in this age. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. But then it says that lovers of darkness in John 3 19 and, and 20, it talks about we were lover of darkness rather than the light and slave to sin. In Romans 6, 17, it talks about slaves to sin. Until we open up our hearts to Jesus, we are slaves to the devil. Okay? We're a slave to him. Who wants to be a slave to him? Okay? And, and uh, the parables are really powerful. 
and, and it talks about the loss, the lost parable of the sheep, you know, um, the lost parable of the corn and the lost parable about the prodigal son. You know, we are all prodigals. We were all prodigals at one time. We were without any hope. We were lost. We were homeless people in a homeless land. And as I read earlier about, um, you know, the course of this world, you know, we're going to break that down in it, we're going to break that down now, the course of this world. And that is the age. It talks about the age that we're living in right now. You know, we're living in an uh, age where there's falling spirits. You know, there's there's falling angels. I'm sorry, there's fallen angels. There's a lot of things that's going on in the, in the third heavens, you know, about um, 25,000 feet or more. I'm not talking about the heaven. I'm talking about the lower heaven where the earthly realm where we're living at right now the power of the air means satan works in the lower atmosphere okay with his fallen angels he's called the prince and the power of this earth of this world okay and i remember when jesus said don't take them out of the world but give us power to stay in the world see we have the holy spirit we're not left here alone and i always often think about the disciples and when they were, they were with Jesus and Jesus say, well, I'm going away where I go. I prepare a place. I'm going to prepare a place for you and you'll be there where I'm at. You're going to be there as well. But I will not leave you as an orphan. I will send back to you my spirit, the Holy Spirit, which will guide us and lead us into all truth. The Holy Spirit, you know, because we walk and I was thinking about that the other day. You know, like people in the in the long time ago, they had the landmines, you know, the, the they would plant bombs or whatever. And you was like in a landfill, you know, and you got to be careful which way to go. And but the Holy Spirit helps you and directs you through all of this in this world that we live in, because the world uh, is, um, is, is is controlled by the prince and the power of the air. Like I said, and it works in the sons and daughters of disobedience whom also is that we once were, you know, but before that we were operating in Satan's little things, uh, whatever he had planned for us, that's what we would do. You know, we would pretend that we were good people, but deep inside and, and behind closed doors, we were listening. And, you know, this is something that everyone, you know, we were all sinners, you know, everybody missed the mark at one time, but there are some that heard the word and the heeds to the word. But it says, in which you once walked. At one time, we lived in trespasses and sins according to the course of this age, which is orchestrated, we know, by Satan, the power, the prince of the power of the air. He's still a very, very much active amongst the rebellious people, the ones who are against God. We can see it right now. You know, we can see that. And uh, the course of the, the course means, in Greek, it means aeon. Aeon, which is an age, a perverse system of current power over the air, like floating in massive thoughts, giving opinions and sick ideals and speculation and pulses and aims and admiration, all this coming from the enemy, you know? And when we were stubborn and disobedient and have no reverence towards God, then the enemy can come in. And in, 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 um, in Proverbs, it talks about like a city with no walls. A man without control is like a city without walls. And that's the way it was when we was walking in the course of this world. Mm. And it's saying, this world is saying now, do what you want to do. Bow down to no authority. Yeah, Don't give authority be. to God, you know. Do what you want to do. Do what feels good. You're you not know, a woman. behaving in is their head you behavior. Be the world's you behavior be is contradicting. Could, is contradictive to what God is doing. It's contradictive to his his very standard. You know, and it's almost like it's trying to just throw out the standards of God. You know, and it's not man. It's the prince and the powers of this world. We do not fight against flesh and blood, people but in spirits in high places, okay? So we have to remember that. Love the people, but hate their sins, okay? 
because we reason why we hate their sin because we know where the sin is going to take them just like if your neighbor's house was on fire and you happen to wake up in the middle of the night and you saw flames coming from your neighbor's house you wouldn't just sit there or worry about them calling you a hater no you're going to go over there and bam on that door and say get out get out your house is on fire you know and you have to love a person enough to get them out of their sin. We're not here to judge, but we're here to give them the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. So somebody out there, you need to say hallelujah. <laughs> you know, glory to God, because, you know, we're freed from that. And it's Ephesians 2, 2, it says, which we were once according, you know, we walked according to the world, this prince of power, the prince in the darkness and the power of the air. Yeah, we were. The power of the air means that Satan works in, like I said, the atmosphere of lust, this, this world. You know, he's the one that's spewing all this stuff out. You know, we look at man and we look at them and say, oh, look at that person. But we have to look at the what's behind that person or what's behind them. The dominion of the air is the fact is another way it, it's, uh, it indicates that this heavenly rim, which according to Ephesians 6, 12, it says that the prince and the power of the world, the darkness and spiritual forces of wick wickedness against the people of God. It rages war, you know, and we don't fight with guns and things like that. We fight with the word of God. We fight in prayer. We pray. OK, but the good news is that we have been risen. God, we have been raised above all principalities and powers. See, we are, we're, we're not in the, we're not here just because we're here, but we're not here. We're citizens of heaven. We live here, but this is not our home. This is not where we reside. And uh, in, in, in scripture, it tells us that we sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And that is the good news. Sitting seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. <laughs> we are raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Isn't that good news? That in this age is to come, we might he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in us and his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. Again, we once walked in darkness. So we have to, when we look at people, we have to see that. We have to realize that. We have to look past their faults and see their need for a savior. You know, they're being locked down. They're like a spider web. You know, you see a spider web and, and you see how he has caught his prey in there sometimes. It might be a fly there. He gets stuck in that web, but he don't take it out. He don't take it out all at once. He picks at it. He might pick a wing, go back, pick another wing, you know, and that's what the enemy does. He gets people caught up in there in his web, you know, and eventually he knows that he can take them on down the hill with him. So don't get caught up in that web. Listen, if you're out there tonight and you don't know Jesus, like I said, there's no special formula. All you have to do is agree. Agree with the principle of God. Agree what he did. Agree with his plan for salvation. And repent. That we must believe in Jesus. Believe that he came to take our sins. Believe that he died on that cross. Believe that he, he rose again and you will be saved. I tell you, it's just powerful when we just call upon the name of Jesus. He hears us. He hears us. On the name of Jesus. There's so many people out there that's depressed and hurting and just down and out. But just know that God loves you. And he came as a homeless child to deliver you back home. Okay. If any man does not have hope for eternal life, then he is going to be depressed. He can only live by what he knows and what he can get for himself. The lust of the world, the flesh and pride of life. It can only go so far. It can only take you so far. It can't bring you the joy and the happiness and the pur purpose that God has called you for. So come on in to the safe. Come on into safety. Know that God loves you and he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's always there for you. He's always there. There's two places. There's only two places there, either up or down, heaven or hell. 
you know, but he wants you to be with him eternally. Read Luke, Luke 16 with the rich man, and the poor man, you know, the beggar and the rich man, you know, he cried out. He said, go back and tell my brothers, we don't want them to come here to this place. But Abraham said, it's too late. There's nothing we can do. You had your choice. You had your chance. And, you know, they they can only, you know, even if a dead man came back and told them, they would listen. They have the Bible. In other words, they have Moses. You have, you have the prophets. Uh, you know, if they don't listen to that, then there's nothing they can do. Nothing you can do. Only thing we can do is call out to Jesus. We believe, believe who he is. Believe that he set out to do what he did. Let him be the Lord and Savior of your life. Don't wait till it's too late, you know, because once you're on the other side, can't nobody pray you back over, you know? You have to make that choice now. What a merciful God to give us that opportunity. And that's why I say we were once children of wrath where we're no children of wrath any longer we're home we're safe you know you might be out there and and you might try to gather yourself together with the the culture and for them to come in agreement with you to silence the christian or those who oppose you and call us haters and all that but we love you don't try to silence the truth, okay? Just go to the Lord. Listen to what we're saying. Go to him, you know, and say, Lord, I have these strong desires, but I know that you can free me. You can set me free. I surrender in Jesus' name. Well, my time is out, but I love you, and you know God loved you. Until next time, be free and stay free. Greater Faith Outreach, a ministry reaching the world by spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. If you need a word of hope, encouragement, prayer, or a copy of today's program, log on to greaterfaithoutreach.com.